Yo, welcome back to the channel. Got something interesting here. And it needs to be talked about because it's something that's relevant and defies physics. So let's talk about the real stuff. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some examples of fire tornadoes and then an example of one that they say was registered at 2200, 23, 2400, whatever. I saw a briefing that said 3000 degrees or up to 3000, but I'll show you one that was over 2000, what they claim. Could it be true? Yeah. If it is, is it weather modification? Probably. I don't know. We'll see. Let's go ahead and continue. Now, come on here. Look at this. This is a fire tornado. This is, this is real footage. Well, that's not you something you see every day. California. All right, but that's not all. Hold up. Bear with me here. Here in San Diego, we're five inches behind in rainfall totals, and that means our coastal chaparral... It's as dry as a bone, and according to one expert, that means we're going to see larger and more dangerous fire tornadoes. We're watching a spectacular fire tornado down there at, at the fire, right on the fire line. The fire tornado, or fire nado, got spinning so fast. A fire nado. Oh, 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 the magical lightning strikes and fire nados happening. Fires without even causing a fire. So it literally was a spinning vortex of air. Tornadoes, yeah. Okay, hold up. A gigantic, devastating wildfire. It was so unusual that even Cal Fire investigators are still struggling to completely understand it. KPIX5 reporter Julie Watts is live in Menlo Park with the science behind the frightening fire tornadoes, or fire whirls as they're called before. You can clearly see the winds going like this. And the circulation's right here. This video, released by Cal Fire, clearly shows the car fire winds and flames moving in opposite directions, forming a massive vortex. The base of the fire tornado, 1,000 feet, the size of three football fields, with winds ranging from 136 to 165 miles per hour, some of the worst in California history, and peak temperatures of 2,700 degrees. What the hell is really going on here? Here I am, I'm scrolling through other videos that I've posted on my channel over 1,600 in three years. Now, I'm trying to find some other videos that it seems like YouTube is scrubbed, but I'm trying to also build a case by creating a pattern here so that there's a correlation. Uh, and the correlation is very simple. Uh, it's basically about the California fire showing extreme temperatures uh, that uh, are also seeing uh, similar in Maui by aluminum melted, glass melted, you know, evidence of temperatures 1,200 to 2,000 degrees. Here we see a fire tornado in California <laughs> at 2,700 degrees. I mean, it's, it's insane. That's way above what's normal. Airborne fires burn at 700 degrees to 1,000 degrees. So, uh, obviously, there's something man-made there that's creating those fires to be higher temperature than what would demand from nature. Wait, 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 wait. What's this? Another thing? Something blue? I keep seeing things that are blue that are not burned in Hawaii. What's going on? All right. We've graduated from the garden hose to the fire hose. Hallelujah. Okay, but a fire tornado, 2,700 degrees, what's going on here? What's going on is wrong. Um, we need to be a voice for what's happening out there. Um, seems like the powers that be, there's energy, uh, what, there's, you know, powers that, that be that have energy uh, weapons and 
access to technology that defies anything that most common everyday citizens wouldn't have any idea about I mean other than oh I saw that in a movie once so you know when we, we when we hear about certain technology like direct energy weapons it sounds more like science fiction like oh you've been watching the Terminator dude you know it's like no, nah, the, the technology exists. They've, they've had the technology for over 20 years. It's documented. Um, I'm sure they've been working on it a lot longer than that. So uh, it, it definitely would be exemplatory. Uh, as an example, it would be something that would demand explanation for why the temperatures were so high, above 700 to 1,000 degrees of what wildfire burns. Um, you know, you see temperatures of over 2,000 degrees. Uh, what one media reported is 2,700 degrees fire tornado. You know. <laughs> These are their words. I'm, I'm taking them at what, what's documented and what they're showing, but at the same time calling them out on what it is. So, um. I just, I just feel like we, we have to speak up, especially in times like this where we know there's cover-ups happening right in front of our face. So I uh, appreciate y'all for watching, um, and I'll check y'all in the next one. All right, thanks for your support. Please like and share these videos. Get them out there. I don't think that's ever happened before. Where was everybody? Where was our government? There was, has still, to this day, has not been one single government official that has driven through the neighborhoods north of Lahaina asking door to door if everybody's okay. Compare the federal response from FEMA and the Biden administration to what you and the other people of Hawaii did instantly. Absolutely nothing. In fact, the locals were the, were the only ones to provide any sort of humanitarian aid. Their trucking and supplies, their boating and supplies, the National Guard blocked them at certain sites and they just went around them. I haven't seen a lot of federal response beside military helicopters flying over. I've seen a lot of locals. Knowing that there wasn't much uh, aid right away, you know, or at all. For about, I say about three to four days afterwards. But we do want everybody to know that we are not saying completely screw you to uh, FEMA and stuff. We stepped up. There's not many places in the world that would be able to come together. Please like and share this video. Get it out there to give people some perspective.